everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA ethereal clash of souls. I'm your host, the Mangus. Joining me on this journey is my friend and co-host, Jelly Knees. Jelly, how you doing? I'm great, Mangus. I'm I'm stoked for this week because this is what I do on a daily basis for ethereal. Every time I see something, it just becomes like, what's the theory behind it? So I'm I'm ready. Yes, you are the like king of ethereal conspiracy <laughs> theories. Everybody goes to you. Whenever we did that live stream with the test, like you were everybody's freaking hero because you just had this massive list of like hard hitting questions. Like, what is this? What is this? What is this? And everybody's yep. like, yes, keep going, Jelly. <laughs> Dude, it's because that's the questions I've been asking myself for years. So it's like, okay, so now I I have the opportunity, right? It's the free reign. <laughs> but uh, okay, so this week, first we're going to start off. They they did do a new ethereal fun facts, which is something Jelly and I kind of knew about already and pretended we didn't know, but we're going to cover it this what? time. We you know, have we insider information. No, you're you're telling me, no. tell me it's not so. Sometimes we know stuff, but we're pretending like we don't know stuff, right? <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> but, uh, we're going to go over that. And then uh, we are, however, going to go over a lot of stuff that we don't know. We're going to, we're, the theme of this episode is unsolved mysteries. We want to talk about various things that have been hinted at, but uh, very, very little information has come out about. So, uh, and uh, Jelly Knees is the data mine expert. He's been a. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he, we want to say that too loud there, but <laughs> <laughs> you want me to edit? You want me to edit that out? No, that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, first of all, let's talk about the ethereal fun facts. Uh, they said that every hero we were talking last last week about Dante's right click being a risk reward mm -hmm. sort of ability, and it seems like every single hero is going to have an ability like that that is high risk, high reward. Jelly, take it away, dude. I'm so stoked for this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. My, like I said last week, my favorite thing is counterplay. So when you're creating counterplay moments in a character's kit by themselves, that just is opens up so many avenues for like cool things to happen. Where you, you see that Dante used his right click, right? And you're like, oh, he can't auto land. You just get the cool play di diving in on him while he can't do anything. Uh, it, just, it sounds like it's going to create some super good clips. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. Or you, you see a Dante going for it, and you're on Dante, and you roll just as he starts that fire, so he misses all those shots. Yeah. And then you have yours up, and you just finish him off. Yeah, that'll be cool stuff. I'm really I, curious however, to see I'm a, what they implement go ahead. with it. Yeah, and as far as the, the other heroes, or other myths, I mean. Yeah, and what the, the constraints, if any, are. I like how, because, so the, the issue with that is power creep could very much become a thing with right-click abilities. Yes. And that it's... It's the super strong thing, but it has a super big downside. So it's this weird give and take that they're going to have to find a really solid balance on, just like everything else in this game, really. So I really am hopeful that they can do it, and it would be really cool if they can, but it also could become a large issue at the same time. That's That was about what I was about to say. That's my concern is it's going to be a very difficult balancing problem. Mm -hmm. Um how big of a handicap guy do you have to put on that that reward like you it's going to be hard to make the downside meet the upside with the upside still feeling powerful um i talked about it a little bit in a video recently about revenant and morgash how epic tried to balance them by giving them handicaps but they gave them bullshit handicaps the handicaps weren't actually existent they they were very easy to bounce back from so the the risk did not match the reward. So it's going to be hard for them to, to do that. Yeah. I mean, you don't want such a high reward ability that it's just using it just isn't a downside because you're automatically going to kill your target. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I have faith in them. I have faith that they will be able to balance it out. And when we're coming into this, it's going to be pre alpha. It's going to be the first time masses of people have gotten their hands on it. So there's plenty of time for them to iron it out. If it doesn't match up, and hopefully, and I'm pretty sure they will, Undying Games will listen to us a little more than Epic Games listen to us with Paragon. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other thing with those abilities is, so not only can you, do you put, you can't put these, these BS handicaps on them, but also you can't make the risk outweigh the reward of it at the same time. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. you'll never use the ability because it's just not worth it. 
and so it's it's the, that line is going to have to be so carefully tread in order to find the balance between the two things that it's going to be interesting to see what they do and what i think when we see the kits for the other six myths in the pre-alpha i think that'll give a lot of perspective of what abilities will look like on a right click and give us a better mm -hmm. perspective of like the scale is it always going to be high damage but you lose out on something is it always is it tied into more than that or what so i'm curious to see what they're going to do with those I, I would like to see a cleric class have a right click that sacrifices their health to give to somebody else i think that would be a cool risk Ooh. reward sort of thing i like that I'm not sure we have anybody thematically that that could tie into though. Uh, they're maybe Marina. She gives she gives her water to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. Don't think about that too hard. She I have a dirty mind. The water out of her own body into yours. Oh yeah, <laughs> great. Really top notch ability. <laughs> <laughs> then she dries up and dies. <laughs> oh, the poor Marina mains out there. <laughs> Okay. Um so I, I, is that you you want to move on to the uh to some of the mysteries that we have here? Absolutely. So the first up we have we have this teaser image and um I don't like to get too visual on the show but if you're watching them, we have the image up right now. If not, it's an image of what did they say it was? Jelly they said it was a passive some it was uh They haven't at all. Yeah, they didn't have it. They didn't Literally, say it at all. Owen was in the Discord, dropped the image, and that was it. Wouldn't give any information, <laughs> wouldn't give any anything, and basically just let people like me lose our minds over the course of the next several days <laughs> trying to figure it out. I was telling us the story earlier on uh, earlier this week on Discord, in their Discord, talking about how when this image first dropped, Paige was here with me, and I pulled it into Photoshop, and I was zooming in, trying to find like any little detail I, I was trying to recreate thing. the colors by so removing that section and pixel by pixel go through and recreate <laughs> the image. Oh, it was it was a thing. And uh my determination for it is it's an ability of some kind used by someone in Ethereal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> so uh if you can't see it right now, it's like a there's an it's an ability wheel. It's like a wheel, and it's got a symbol in the middle which looks like the marksman um, class symbol. And then this wheel has six selections and they're all various myths from Ethereal. And um, and one of them is highlighted. Malaya is highlighted. So I don't know what this could possibly be. I really think it's... I, I guess I thought it was a passive because it, in my mind, I think it is probably a passive. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, bear in mind, this is whatever this is, is, isn't finalized at all. I mean, it has the myth Owen who, uh, to, if I believe correctly is no longer going to be a part of the game, but, um, they have Owen's picture on that wheel. So it's definitely not anything finalized and we can get just a little tiny glimpse in the bottom left corner, even though Owen tried to try to scribble it out with, with some red ink, you can see a little bit of red. So I think, think that it's probably malaya or dante i would even though both are represented on the wheel i would completely agree with that and i think i think owen tried to fake us out by making us believe that this is the marksman passive the class passive where you can select you somebody so? and do more damage i think that's a fake out uh i don't have very good reasoning behind it other than it feels <laughs> like something owen would do where he thinks because we know about the marksman class passive and this image is six people. You can select one of them, right? And and like you said, the symbol in the middle is kind of reminiscent of the marksman uh, class sigil or whatever. Icon, you want to call yeah, it. yeah, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it's just trying to fake us out enough. And but you're right. The red in the bottom left of the image hints towards Malaya or Dante. Um, I think Owen is making the big brain play and has Malaya selected because that's who it's for. Yeah. And that it's just him selecting Malaya as like you would as a marksman and you're <laughs> selecting Malaya, but that's him saying like, this is for Malaya. That's, uh, that's, uh, I'm 99% sure that this is a fake out and it's not the marksman passive. Ah, <laughs> oh, you could be right. You could be right. I don't know. 
And that's the only characters we have that have those red aesthetics currently that will be in pre-alpha are Dante and Malaya. Yeah. The thing that uh, was brought up to me is that the red in the bottom left could be a skin for one of the seven pre-alpha characters. Oh, yeah. And it could completely just throw off everything we just said. <laughs> and, Owen, and Owen's probably just cackling at us. For oh, I'm our... sure he is. But that's, didn't even think of the skins. I didn't, and everyone's Ugh. gonna have one skin in pre-alpha, so we know that they're there, they're existent in some way. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. No. <sighs> I I just want to know. I don't even care who it's for. I just want to know what the ability is for more than anything. Let us know in the comments, it, guys, what you what what you think it is. Please, I I will take any ideas. <laughs> 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 I need to regain some sanity. And then we have a, a hidden message. Jelly, you want to tell us about that? So this message is if you go, if you access the sources for their website update for phase one. This is listed in the sources. And I combed through the actual code itself to try and figure out how this works and found something saying it was timed. There was a timer set. So I left the page open for a while. And somebody on the Discord mentioned this as well. Uh, after... In my testing, 15 minutes and 14 seconds, this image appears. Oh, instead of the, uh, whatever the website says, step into the light, I think is what it is. Yeah. So the, the ethereal clash of souls step into the light is there when you bring up the page initially. After 15 minutes and 14 seconds, that fades away and the devour the old, reborn the new appears in the middle of the screen. Uh, I originally thought this was just like a little Easter egg that they threw in. Yeah. And this week, Sinist Virtue reached out to me, which is from the UG team, and specifically asked if I knew it was there, which just set my theory brain off because I'm like, okay, why are you asking me about this? If it was nothing, <laughs> you wouldn't care. But maybe you, it is nothing, and you're just trying to make me freak out about it and think about yeah. like, all the implications. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what do you think, Van Goose? What do you think this means, if anything? Uh, we talked about a little of this before we started recording, and I think the second part doesn't make sense. <laughs> reborn <laughs> the new? If it's new, you can't be reborn because it's new. You can't have something new being reborn. But yeah, my, my theory was it means they're going to devour all the old MOBAs and start anew with their own awesome MOBA. <laughs> that, that, that was my theory. I, don't, I, I hope that's it. That they just send this to all the other MOBAs and be like, yeah, this is our this is our <laughs> thought process about you. And have them all wonder why it says Reborn the New. And then Dota comes back and goes, what does Reborn the New mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about this a lot when I found it. And it's, to me, it could be a motto of some bigger entity in the ether. Okay. In that, so it's devoured. Like higher than a myth? Uh, yeah. So I'm thinking one of their deities. Okay. I'm thinking that one of them, it's kind of the, to me, it feels like a very takeover kind of phrase. That they're going to get rid of the old ways and then create their, their own way, the better way kind of ideals. And maybe that's just the deity phrase across the board, that that's just the thought process behind all of these deities and why their followers follow them is that their way is going to abolish the old way and then start anew with their own ideas or whatever you want to call it. Maybe it's, it's malware hacking into Ethereal's website. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. That's that. Cause that's, that's what malware cool. is all about is devouring the old. That could be a really cool new, thing. And hit, Okay. The new order of malware. They know that I look through their source files all the time. Malware is a code. <laughs> oh, oh, Mangoose, you just broke my brain here. <laughs> this is why they asked me if I. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Okay. Time to code oh, through he... everything again. <laughs> I think we figured out why I, I, I get your camera coming in all pixelated. It's because you're, you are pixelated now. <laughs> A little bit. You've been infected with malware. A little bit. Oh my god, <laughs> that's so brilliant. Could, oh, 
very much like Sombra did with Overwatch when she released. She's their hacker character, so she yeah, yeah, yeah. hacked all of their stuff and was leaving a little. Oh, ethereal. Okay. <laughs> you sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so much for sleeping tonight. It's fine. I didn't. Whatever. <laughs> Oh, man. oh, I'm so good at making you uncomfortable. <laughs> so good. It's kind of <laughs> uncanny. Uh, all right. But before my brain explodes, let's move on to a different theory that made my brain explode. The overseer class. Yep. Uh, this is the eighth class in ethereal will not be present in the pre alpha. Um, it is still confirmed that they are working on it, that they, it exists. There is an overseer class still in existence. It didn't just get removed. But we don't know any details about what character is going to be in that class um, or what the class ability itself is. What do you think? Yeah, we don't know any passives or anything. Yeah. What do you think the... I guess we'll start with the class ability. What do you think the class ability could be? I, I, I don't know. See, when I, when I think Overseer... Again, I, I bring up this other game too much, but Heroes of the Storm has a, has a hero called Abathur. And this is the first thing I thought of when I saw Overseer was Abathur. But then I asked Owen, I was like, hey, man, um, Overseer, is that going to be anything like Abathur? And he said, who the fuck is that? Well, he didn't say who the fuck is that, but he, <laughs> said he, he didn't know who Abathur was. Owen doesn't talk like me. Nobody talks like me. But um, so Abathur and Heroes of the Storm, like, he takes three hits to kill, but you never see him. He's like not... He goes somewhere where he has vision on the battlefield, wraps himself in a cocoon, and then he can lay landmines all over the map. Or he can um, do a symbiote where he put like he kind of attaches himself to another hero, and he can't move them around or anything, but he can fire from atop that hero and give them extra abilities and stuff. So that's what I'm thinking it will sort of be, is somebody that can place traps around the map, uh, perhaps place, um, like, healing packs around the map we did see that healing globe in the uh in the mm -hmm. demo maybe they could drop healing globes you know in places where people it, it'll be beneficial for the team and uh perhaps even um make their presence known on top of a of a of a myth and, and you know use them as a turret to fire so that was my idea just because you know i'm just basing it on my expectations of how abathur plays in heroes of the storm that of course doesn't at all mean that that's what it's going to be in uh in ethereal jelly i know you've got a million theories on overseers <laughs> what you got buddy so my thing my theories start because of the symbol that they have for overseers it's kind of like a lizard's eye in the crest that they have mm -hmm. to me that's a hint towards it's some kind of vision um whether that be a denial of vision uh extra access to vision or what that may be um, the theory that I've always kind of, I guess, personally had headcanon for what an overseer is, is that they're going to have, uh, if you think something like Rainbow Six Siege, you have cameras spread around the map that you can access and look at that area without mm, having to yeah. be there, that they're going to have some kind of access to towers, eyes of Sauron, if you will, that they will be able to just see specific spots of the map using their class ability at all times with, if, without a ward being there that they are kind of the information uh, person on your team that will have constant awareness or will rather need to have constant awareness to be the most effective of the map. Something I heard somebody say a while back is that they could also have some kind of, uh, some kind of drone, eagle, bird, spirit, whatever you want to call it, fly around the map that they can control. So when they step into, they, they press their class ability and they become this spirit that then can free fly around the map and look out at everything and gain awareness. Then when you repress, you go back to your character and maneuver accordingly, which I thought could be a really cool idea. And it kind of ties into that risk reward factor that we've been talking about of that you leave your body behind, but you have the ability to just gain vision at will, basically, yeah. throughout the entire map. That's a cool idea. But we have okay. no information. Again, it's another one of those things that they're keeping very tight lipped. Yeah. And I, I think I, it, go ahead. I think it'd be neat if they could take over turrets like towers and stuff mm -hmm. and um, just fire like specifically, maybe increase the tower range and specifically direct the fire of the targets. I think that would be a, 
kind of a neat thing that they would be able to do. That way, like if you th- if you're pushing up with your minions, and you think you're you're t- you're safe from tower damage. All of a sudden, the overseer overtakes that tower and starts pinging you down instead of the minions. <laughs> well, that could be take a good you by counter- quite a surprise. That could be a good counter to what we were talking about last week of the potential for if it's double jungle for a lane to become mm-hmm. a 3v1. If you have an overseer that can just jump into your turret, you essentially balance right. that out to a 3v2. It's still not perfect, but it's that quick assistance that you can get from somebody that may not be nearby you, which could be a cool idea. And I, I don't know. No There's idea. a lot of. I have no idea where overseers potentially even could fit on the map. Uh, and granted, it's more it's based on what their class ability is going to be. I think if they're heavily vision based, they'll probably be junglers more often than not, because they they that's just the most potential to use their vision type deal. But mm-hmm. we have zero idea. They could be another support class for all we know. I just I don't think that they will they they will physically be on the map. That's that's the that's my oh. one theory that I'm going to stick to. Is I don't think they're physically going to be on the map. I think they're going to affect the battlefield in other ways. And the downfall of that will, of course, you have one less body in a team fight, unless they can somehow. So they're going to be some kind of like spectator esque character, a spectator that can that can influence the map by, like I said, setting traps in certain areas or throwing down healing in certain areas, like and then it. every once in a while taking over a tower or something like that. I really like that actually. And it's yeah. it's one of those things where it the the hard part with doing something like that is you're essentially telling somebody like you don't get to play the game in the same way as the other five people on your team. But if that's how the game is built around, that's also a cool idea that it's it's five v five with one extra spectator. D. I mean, oh, okay. Now that you're getting my brain to fire. The whole thing of like the deities watching over everyone, the yeah. overseer could act as that deity in your your way of like that they're flying over the map, keeping control of larger elements than just a single character. There would just, there would have to be some way that you could kill them though. Mm, like maybe true. whenever they do something like possess a tower or something, or maybe yeah, I don't know. There's a couple ways you you could do it, I suppose. It's all very interesting. And, and yeah. it seems like they're ramping up for more things to happen soon. I mean, we are at phase one of the website. And we know, in, in theory, phase two will be a huge release of information. That- the, yeah, the first release of the, the very first time they released that website, that was a massive influx of information. Yeah. I mean, the, it was the class abilities, I think, were the biggest thing that they revealed in that. Yeah, we got class abilities. We got class passives, uh, Atropos. Uh, we got a bunch of oh. lore about the the various um, regions. Mm-hmm. All kinds of stuff. More information about the characters' backgrounds and all that. And ev- Yeah. Man. I'm excited. Uh, I They've been really putting a lot of emphasis on this new website, which I like. I think that's a great idea. It's a great way to hype the game but not directly like it's this weird it's a path we're following their path of leading to the release of the game and i think this is a good like next step in that that evolution of waiting for the game to come out yeah so real quick i do want to go back to the website something i thought about with this uh hidden image that pops up after 15 minutes and 14 seconds super like Probably not, but it's it would make me die a little bit inside if it was true. If the website phase one to phase two, this the difference is fifteen days, I will lose my mind. Just because it's a the fifteen minute wait to get the new image and then fifteen days after phase one, phase two begins, and my little what? nerd heart will explode. Just saying. Like it's just <laughs> <laughs> What is that movie twenty seven? Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's you. That's you. <laughs> it's hot, dude. It's it's the Pepe Silvia Always Sunny in Phil- Philadelphia meme. <laughs> that's me one hundred percent of the time with this game. Oh, um, all right. Did you have anything uh, else to say about overseers? I think that's it for overseers. I can't wait to see more about what they might do. And I think, I mean, if you guys watching have any ideas, leave them in the comments for sure. Like, I love reading other people's thoughts about what overseers could be and all that. 
please, please do. I want to, I want to see all that information. And then I want to go back after we know what they are, look back through these comments, be like that guy was right. Yep, that guy <laughs> was on it. Who that girl had to? it, had it all time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we find out it was somebody from UG under a different name. <laughs> They're just teasing us the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it was. We told you a long time ago exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> All right, we have one last thing on here to talk about. Uh, yeah, I think we got time to talk about this. And it's the mini map and how the mini map will function. Yeah. How the hell are they going to do a mini map for three lanes that float atop each other? Um, uh, go ahead. I'll I'll let you your eyes first i think it really comes down to if the lanes are the same shape i think if the lanes are the same shape it'll be fairly easy to do but we we have no idea maybe the top lane is a completely different layout than the middle lane which is a completely different layout of, from the bottom lane mm -hmm. so without knowing that it's kind of hard to theorize on what they could possibly do what do you what do you think they could do for a mini map <laughs> My, I've got two ideas, and I'm not sure I like one of them, so I'll leave it for the second one. But the first <laughs> idea is that you just de-stack them and sit them right next to each other on the mini-map. And granted, that depends on size of the lane, because if one, okay. if like the bottom lane is super large in comparison to the super skinny other lanes, then that won't work because you'll take up a huge chunk of your screen that way. But if they're, I'll say, relative lane size comparatively to other MOBAs, in theory, you could just de-stack them and put them next to each other and then just make sure you're identifying which is which lane. Because the other theory I had is you leave them or you make it that there's a button and you switch between each lane's minimap. Mm. Um, whether it be That might be a nice option to have. Something. It would, other than at a glance, you can't see vision of other lanes. Right. It's the having to press whatever button that would be in order to, if I have to scroll mm. four times to see the top lane, and then I see, oh, the Sky Slayer is in top lane. Now I can go in on my guy. That's a lot of time before I can just do something that I have to quickly scroll through, see the Sky Slayer, put it back to my lane so I can watch it, and then engage on whatever I was going to do. And to me, that's a lot of downtime to force on somebody rather than just making it perfect at a glance that you can just see, oh, the Sky Slayer's there, go. Okay, yeah. But, I like that idea of being able to flip the lanes, flip yeah, through the lanes. I feel like it's very interesting, and maybe it's a setting both ways. Whereas, like somebody like like me that would prefer to see it all at a glance can have a larger mini map on my screen, or that you can add a, toggle a setting and then it's a you yeah. flip through the individual lanes. Uh, my idea was to just if somebody's in a, a in a different lane, then they're just a little bit grayed out, kind of like. Um, mini maps in uh, World of Warcraft. Like, if you're looking for mining nodes, if there's one that's underground, it's a little bit of a different color than one that's above ground. And then they could also just denote, a, like, just put a number beside everybody's portrait on the little mini map. So, you know, one for first level, two for second level, three for third level, mm -hmm. so that you could tell at a glance where they were. I think that, that would they would need to do something about with with color though, also. Because, you know, at a glance, you're not, you, you just kind of flick to the mini map with your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you watch it intently, but most of the time you're just flicking to it. And it, you, they need to be able to provide us a way with one small glance to give us the information that we need. So absolutely, it's going to be a huge challenge for them. I can't wait to see what they actually come up with. Again, if you guys have ideas, if you have, if you have, if you know of other games that with a similar layout that have have mini maps and uh just just let us know how they've done it in those games the only one i can think of again was world of warcraft but and sure the other thing they plenty could of others out there that i don't know how it would fare it would be one of those things you have to wait and feel it before you could really determine is that only you can only see the mini map in the lane you're present in and then you're re you're relying on your teammates for the other information from the other lanes okay it promotes that team play aspect but it kind of removes the feeling of being able to solo carry because I can't just watch the other lanes maps. I have to wait for them to tell me. So it's yeah. that, that definitely give and take vibe where if they're going for a, like we want everybody to play as a team as much as possible, 
then that would make some amount of sense, I guess. But I don't know for we, sure. We would definitely need. I I think you would definitely have to have voice chat for something like that. Yep, I agree. Yeah, or call outs just wouldn't be enough to relay all the information that you'd want to give. I'll just be the guy in the in-game chat that just spams my Discord link. <laughs> Join my Discord. We have to talk to each other. <laughs> Jelly needs TTV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Malaya main. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> oh, they took my uh, Malaya. Are you going to be a malware main soon? Oh, me. I uh, Don't get me started. I'm not going to sleep much <laughs> tonight. I'm Watch. Uh, tomorrow. You know, I'll just say it now. Tomorrow. I'm going to come out with a video about the website. And it's just going to be brain vomit because I'm just going to lose <laughs> my mind all over it. <laughs> all right. I think that's about it for this week. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you got something else. No, not at all. I think all right. Uh, yeah. Plugs, Jelly, you got anything to plug? Uh, the YouTube video where I absolutely lose my mind on the website. <laughs> because by the time this goes out, I will have that out 100%. So... Yeah, uh, Jelly Knees. Uh, I don't know what how YouTube does their links anymore. Just search Jelly Knees on the YouTube search bar. It comes up. Um, Any streams going on this week? Yeah, reg back to regular stream schedule. So twitch.tv slash Jelly Knees. I know how that one works. <laughs> what, what you streaming? You? Streaming Godfall this week. I'll probably do some talks about ethereal stuff about the website and just talk to anyone in the community that wants to come ask questions and yeah right mostly i think godfall in that yeah i'm going to continue my uh the pathless playthrough um i meant to play some more today and i wasn't able to but uh yeah be on the lookout for that if you want to watch that um i had some sound issues with the first two episodes so i think i have that all fixed up now so look forward to that and uh before we go i will say we were talking about numbers earlier and how you often see stuff that isn't actually there. Your 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 brain just kind of misinterprets it. I pass this sign at work at least once a week for about a year in this town, and it said 3.14 will divide. And I thought it was a sign advertising pie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why the fuck does this podunk ass town have the this sign advertising pie? In the middle of fucking nowhere. They had a lot that was 3.14 acres large, and they were willing to divide it. <laughs> <laughs> to sell it. Or, Some random or just sign. It. Just, you know, pie. Just why not? <laughs> I said 3.14. We'll divide. You divide pie. <laughs> I thought this was going to start with another one of your, like, crazy conspiracy theory no it's just me being stupid <laughs> actually that was me being too smart for what i was looking at <laughs> anyway that is going to be it for enter the either this week thanks for joining us thanks for hanging out leave your comments down in the uh, comments below of course <laughs> anyway this is uh, mangoes and jelly signing off you guys <laughs> have a good one. Oh, greatest sign off ever <laughs> You stick them comments up your ass. You That's take what you do. them comments <laughs> and you put them wherever the comments go. Man, goo.